<clears throat> first and foremost, uh, Lily has to take her test, so she's going to be in test mode. Lily, I'll give you the option if you want to grab a <clears throat> desk, move it outside, or you can stay inside. Your choice. I'd rather go outside. All right. Uh, everyone got one <laughs> class period to finish this, so you're going to have one class period. Remember what I said, the mean is the hardest one. Uh, I would personally leave that as your very last question. All right, I have the test all graded. They're all in the grade book. Uh, 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 period four still has to take their test, so I'm not going to uh, grade it until we get to the very end. Mask. Still learn mask. All right. So period four still has to take their test. Uh, so I'm not going to hand you back your test until essay today. Uh, overall class, we did fine. Uh, very few people really tanked on it. Uh, uh, I think it was only one. Uh, may have been two. Um, not too many A's. Uh, it really showed me who, who basically paid attention to the two days that we did a review and you were like, nope, I'm not going to do a review and you can't make me. Uh, we have two tests left or one test left and that is semester final. Uh, this is your final schedule right here. As we've already stated, you have to have your books turned in by, we are period one, uh, by Wednesday. Uh, I would suggest that you don't turn in your book early although I will accept books. Uh, I would not turn in your books early um, simply because you're gonna need them if you wanna do a review. You're like, oh, he did that one thing and I don't remember your book. You don't have your book. You can't look at that section, that chapter where we cover that material. Um, however, I will uh, probably start Wednesday. I'll start uh, taking uh, 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 books a little bit early. This is not your schedule. Obviously you're, you've already taken your test. This is fourth period schedule. Uh, we're going to do a semester final review for, for every day this week. So you got, it's going to have the biggest semester final review. Uh, January, we started chapter eight and we finished with chapter 12. So we have four chapters to review. We'll review uh, one a day and then we'll have Friday for a cleanup for whatever it is you guys want to. I'll just leave it open uh, for whatever you guys want to cover. Uh, you haven't had. Oh, I truly forgot. All right. You just heard it from the principal, Mask, Malachi. All right. Um, questions on what's about to happen? Nothing? Yeah. I am. And I'm going to give you, as I always do, I'm going to give you a copy of the test. Uh, some of you have already uh, adapted this, and you're like, wow, he give, literally gives a copy of the test every single time. And question number one is the same as question number one on practice test every single time. The only difference is the numbers are changed. Uh, some of you are appreciative of that, and some others of you literally, mm -hmm. it's the end of the year, haven't even realized that, that the practice test is the copy of the test, right? I, I should have every single year, you know, nothing but straight A's because I mean, what teacher gives you a copy of the test? How is it that you can't get an A if you have a copy of the test? That seems ridiculous. On the, on the face of it. Now, granted, it is math, so you can make silly mistakes. I'm just saying, I don't have straight B's and A's in the class. I have A through F in the class, right? Uh, we do have an entire week of possible, possible tutoring sessions after school if you need it. We have a possibility of you, you know, sending a chat on Teams. Uh, I can do a Zoom session uh, for online learners. So I have a few of them still, uh, but usually no one takes advantage of that. We got one test. Uh, it was worth uh, two test grades. We've only had two tests this quarter. So this one test is worth everything that we've done this quarter so far. That's how much it counts. It's not like, oh, it's just one test. I probably can get an F on it and still be okay. No, you get an F on this semester final, you're probably going to have an F for the semester, for the quarter, sorry. Um, so make sure you study. Uh, so that's the bad part. The good part is it's multiple choice. The whole what? test, and the reason why it's multiple choice is I have to have it graded the day we take it. So I, I, I can't, you know, spend three days grading it like I usually do. Um, so I have to have it graded the day that we take it. Um, so I always choose to make uh, for semester finals to make it multiple choice. For a math test, that brings in a whole laundry list of things that make your life better. One, if it's an equation, you just throw the number in there and see if it works. Like one of the four numbers has to work. So if it's a solve the equation in, in, in it, that's what we're doing today. 
you just take the four numbers one at a time, throw them into the equation, see which one works without solving anything. Well, that's just the power of a multiple choice test. And that's true for any math test where it says solve the equation. Uh, that's pretty much what math is in high school, is solving equations, except for geometry. Um, so that's the option. The second thing is that you get immediate confirmation of, did you get it right or did you get it wrong? You do the math and you get 9.6 and no answers say 9.6. Well, you know you got it wrong. So you immediately can go back and, well, where did I make my mistake? Oh, here it is. Now I get 9.6. You immediately know that you got the right, or you got a different thing than 9.6. You, and it's, it's answer A, 9.4. Now you immediately know you got the answer right. The, the problem is a lot of times on multiple choice tests, not only do they throw the right answer, they throw the most common wrong answer. So for instance, if it's two times negative three, not only is six there, but so is negative six. Uh, so is uh, five and negative five for the people that see multiplication and are thinking uh, additions, I'm sorry, uh, negative one, uh, uh, thinking addition, subtraction type thing. So sometimes that can lead you to a false sense. I got it right. Macy, what's your burning question? No calculator on this test at all, right? Uh, you have, can use two resource cards. So two sheets of paper, front and back. The only, the only part of the test that is, I don't know, calculation intensive was the geometry portion. You remember that? We did area and volume of shapes. So when, what I do is because it's, it's a full test, so I don't want to allow you to use calculator for the whole test. What I do is um, I just simply don't put very challenging problems, like, you know, the numbers it, with a calculator, I can make it, uh, you know, side length of 3.26, uh, and you have to do your calculations with that. So all I do is choose to put friendlier numbers, and I don't give you as many questions on the geometry as I do the other ones. But yeah, it's not going to be a calculator test. So how do you study for a review? Well, first and foremost, I I'm gonna, it's Monday. I'm going to hand you the review today. Right, and your test is next Wednesday. It's Monday. So don't lose this. This is what you should get. For me personally, I would do nothing extraordinary unless it's something that like, okay, that is the one thing that I do not know how to do, solve equations. Come see me for tutoring this week. Uh, but I wouldn't do any extra study for a math test this week at all. I would just show up to class every day, participate, do the, do the uh, review with me, uh, wait until, let's see, uh, this weekend, you should probably be studying for Mondays and Tuesdays test. I would ignore the math entirely. Somewhere around Monday or Tuesday is when you might want to start pulling out your, we're talking about uh, of next week, uh, Monday or Tuesday is when you probably want to pull this back out. As long as you work hard this week, that's a, that's a solid review. You're not going to forget it in three days. But I would say Monday or Tuesday, remember, it's a half-day schedule. So Monday, what do you got period two and four? On the um, history. And you got one test to study for this weekend, history. That's what you should spend your time with. If there's another core class that you know you have a final in, that you know that, oh, I got it. I mean, there are people right now in seventh grade that they have to get a certain grade in order to make it to eighth grade. Those kids better be studying for that test. I don't care what day it happens. They better be spending their time. You guys are going to take uh, one test on Monday. Is it period two or period four? Four. Right. Uh, absolutely study for your history this weekend. History. Wait, and then, what? You only have one test because the other one is a special. Unless your special specifically said, hey, I'm giving you a semester. But you guys know that, not Unless me. But you've talked to her and she says, I'm not giving a semester final. No. Yes? No, she said she is. No, oh. she isn't. She asked to kill her. No, she isn't. You guys better talk to her. She says she is giving us an art project or a free period. Yes, so, not really. just talk to her. So, I would suggest, I bet she's not giving, I don't think she's giving the final, but I could be wrong. I'm not the art teacher. Uh, this weekend, study for, that's the only thing you should study for. Get an A on your history. Um, what do you got, sixth and seventh? Um, gym and English. And then Wednesday. Is there a semester final in gym? Yes. Um, yes. If you have an A, you don't have to it, but if it's a B or below, you, you can take it and get a higher grade. Yeah, and right? then I, there I are literally know. people who have F's in the gym. I know. I wow. know. I'm not sure how that's possible in a gym class, but congratulations, some of you have failed the easiest class that exists in the because history some people of. Don't change in the that's on you guys. That's crazy. 
Uh, I would study for your other tests. So Monday night, uh, like I said, I, if math is your thing. You're like, oh, this was all, when we did this entire review this week. You're like, okay, I got this. Maybe you can blow it off until Tuesday to do your final studying for it. For those of you that math is your is not your thing, then I would say start studying on Monday of next week for this final. It's a half day. You go home, you eat some lunch, maybe take a nap, wake up, start studying. Study until bedtime, right? That's what good students do is they study. And I don't mean like study like, oh, I don't know, I flipped through the page. I mean actual study. For math, how do you study? You take the practice test and you redo it. You take the whole darn thing over again. Okay, so it takes you an hour. Great. Now you got another five hours that you can spend studying. You know what I'm saying? You got plenty of time. Don't think that this is like a, this should be an easy thing. Studying is work. If it feels like, wow, I'm exhausted, then you're doing it right. It's work. Uh, Ms. Garland, myself, we can talk, uh, tell you stories when we studied of like hours and hours upon hours of studying to get ready for a test. That's what you do. What's up? So I just realized something. We have math and science finals on the same. That's hard. That's hard. Right. Right? Make sure that when you're seniors, you don't make that schedule like that for you. Bro, yes. Like Later, can you like did your parents meet with the principal last week yeah. there's your answer if your parents met with the principal the people who are in danger of failing right I, I don't want you guys to say well he just told me i can blow off finals because i can get an f on it and still pass that's not the way you do things right your parents don't expect you to get an F on the final. Your teachers don't expect you should not expect yourself to get a final. But I'll just say to comfort you, if you hadn't, if you did not meet with the principal last week, then the outcome of your your final uh, affects your overall grade, not your pass fail. Yeah. Uh, no. Talk to your parents. All right. Any other questions? All right, let's do this. Keegan, pass this out, please. One day, everybody. Yes. Well, period four still has to take their tests, so I'm going to wait until they take their test. I'll hand you your essay. I'll come by your room and essay and hand out. Lily should be done her test. I'll probably have a grade then as well, too. All right. Chapter eight was solving equations. Solving equations. So we're going to go back to one step, two step equations. Should be pretty easy. Now let me share this so that the online learners are not looking at a blank screen anymore. Malachi. Uh, you don't need your notebook. You simply need what he's handing to you right now. Hey, Mr. Chardier, yes. How many times did you go golfing on Tuesday? I actually had teacher training this weekend, so I couldn't do anything. It's where you train. It's where you train to be a better teacher. <laughs> All right. Let me make that bigger. Oh, well, that's what's what we're going to review tomorrow. I was like, thank God. All right, here we go. Solving equations, we basically follow the steps, four steps, and we basically follow the three overall rules. The three overall rules for algebra is you keep working until the variable is by itself. In other words, you keep working at the equation until M, in this case, is by itself, either on the left side or the right side. Let me talk, please. Okay. Secondly, uh, whatever you do to one side, you must do to the other side. You decide to multiply one side by two, you got to multiply the other side by two. Everything. Uh, lastly, uh, to get rid of things, you do inverse operations. The inverse of subtraction is addition. The inverse of addition is subtraction. The inverse of multiplication is division. The inverse of division is multiplication. All right. Those are your four inverses. That's it. Those are the rules. The guide or the steps to solve an equation are those Three questions in one statement. The three question is, is the variable by itself? So you identify, it. where is it? Uh, it's on the right side. Is it by itself? No, there's a 15. I need to get rid of the 15 
in order for the, the M to be by itself. So step number one is the variable by itself. If the answer is yes, you're done. If the answer is no, then you say, what is attached to the variable? Well, 15 is attached. How is it attached? Okay. How do you get rid of subtraction? Well, what's the inverse of subtraction? So what are you going to add to both sides of the equation? Okay. So we are going to decide to add 15 to both sides of the equation in order to solve it. Okay. We have passed the point of the easy ones. These will all involve positive and negative numbers. So maybe on your resource card at the very top, because it involves almost everything we do, uh, you need to have the rules for addition and subtraction. Remember, that's either same or different signs. When you have same signs, uh, you add. When you, I shouldn't put a plus, I uh, add. When you have different signs, you subtract. Then we have multiplication and division. Multiplication and division, you either have same signs or you have different signs. When you have same signs, the answer is positive. When you have different signs, the answer is negative. At this stage, most of you have this memorized anyway. For those of you that don't and need constant reminders, then make sure it's on the top of your page of your resource card so you can look at when you do this. Malachi? You'll be okay. You'll be okay. Malachi, same or different signs? So different signs, it says to do what? Subtract those two numbers. 15 minus 11 is? Now, what I left off was the fact that that other step of, hey, more positives or more negatives. Okay, more positives, more negatives. So the answer is four. Step number one is the variable by itself. Therefore, you just found the answer. I walk over here. Here's A, B, C, D. Therefore, the answer is, is, is B. Now, it will be a bubble sheet to fill in. Uh, you'll do that. Okay. Now, a couple of these are some ugly answers here. But remember, you can always throw the answers in to see if it works. Negative 26. Negative 26 minus 15, same sign as add, not negative 11. Uh, 14 minus 15 is negative 1. Well, that didn't work, not negative 11. Well, uh, fractions and whole numbers result in more fractions, right? Don't we're adding or subtracting whole numbers, we're going to get a whole number, or integer, sorry, not a whole number. Yes? I don't see any Oh, there's going to be some two steps. All right, questions on number one. No, I'm not going to go over every single one. Uh, I'm going to go over every kind that you will see. So question number one, done. Question number two, it's the same thing. Why is question number three different? It's two. Why is question number three different? X plus five equals six. What's attached to X? Plus five. How's it attached? Addition. How do you get rid of addition? Subtraction. So what are we going to subtract from both sides? Five. Okay. Different signs, six minus five is? One. And since it's a multiple choice, most of you probably aren't going to write, well, x equals one. Oh, the answer is one, the answer is b. Done. Questions? No. No. Okay. I wonder, do you think they can make it any harder for us? Well, I don't want to insult people's intelligence, but those of you that are looking at it like, well, that's easy. When we first were taught this, this was not easy. It's easy because now you know what you're doing. Before, when you didn't know what you're doing, uh, I could have given you this test, you would have failed it. But now that you know what you're doing, don't assume it's easy because it is easy. It's not easy because it's easy. It's easy because you know what you're doing. Well, show this to the current sixth graders and they can't do it. Well, if you show that problem to them so they can figure it out. All right. I gave you plenty of practice problems here. Plenty of practice problems. All right. Number nine. Why is this one different? Um, now, unfortunately, I can't control where they put the answers. I wish they put the answers over here so you could actually in space so you could work. But most of these, you're going to probably want to rewrite it so you can uh, do some work here. All right, what's attached to V? What is attached? How is it attached? How do we get rid of division? What are we going to multiply both sides by? Now, everyone look at the board. I still will see for seventh graders. Occasionally, somebody will write that. 
Guess why that's wrong? Because you What's six times six? Thirty-six. It doesn't get rid of six. Technically, we are multiplying by six, but we're multiplying by six over one. No, you don't have to write six over one unless it's a fraction. Okay. It's really six times v over six. So therefore, that means six divided by six that cancels, and we're left with v is equal to. Well, it certainly isn't two and a half, and it certainly isn't nine. Could it be 21? No. I mean, I don't even need to actually do the math. I just need to reason this out. 10 times 6 is 60. So 15 times 6 is going to be bigger than 60. 21 is smaller than 6. There's only one answer left. And oh, is every answer B? Well, every answer that we picked has been B. So the answer is B. The next one's A, B, D, C, A, B. All right, questions. I said I was going to do one of every type. What more could we want? All right. Number 11. I have 13V is equal to 65. What's attached to V? How is 13 attached to V? How do we get rid of multiplication? So we're going to divide both sides by. I divide both sides by 13. Remember, that's a fraction bar for division, not the division symbol. 13 divided by 13 cancels. Let's look at our answers. I don't know what, well, actually I do, but I don't, if you don't know what 65 divided by 13, let's just try to reason this out. It's on 78. Could it possibly be 15? No. Yeah. yeah. You're saying that 13 times 15 no. is 65. No. Is 13 times 52, 65? No, is 13 times 78, 65? No. I don't even need to do the math to find this answer. Now, that's only because it's a multiple choice test. All right. Uh, if, if the numbers were, I don't know, four, five, seven, you know, six, I would have to do the math. But the numbers are so crazy on this particular one that you can get to the answer pretty quickly just by looking at what the answers are. Does everybody understand what I did there? I mean, I didn't even do the math to find the answer. Finally, it's not B, but it's D. Okay. By the way, 13 times five is 65. So a lot of people won't even do the actual algebra for one step equation because they, well, the answers are right here. One of these has to work. All right, any questions so far? Quick review. Quick review. All right, so that does it for one step equation. That does it for one step equations. We will see two step equations later, just not right now. All right, that's your first review. All right, your job in the remaining time is to finish questions one through what is it? What's the last one there? 40. 16. Okay. Oh, I think so hard. Well, we're gonna we're gonna oh review the other other stuff tomorrow. Oh. We'll review the other stuff tomorrow. Uh, the 18 through 4. Is it 40? Yeah. Okay, 18 through 4. Say again. Sure. All right. Any questions? No. All right. When are you turning your books in? Wednesday. Not this week, but next week. If you're one of those kids, like I literally forget to wake up every morning, Keegan. Um, <laughs> you might want to turn your books in early if you think you're going to forget, because if you don't turn your books in, you're paying for them. Uh, you're going to turn them into me. Okay? I'm going to remind you every single day. Yet I will have, I usually have one or two people in every class, even though I remind you a week out and I remind you every day, they forget to turn the books in. If you think you're one of those persons. Uh, and you got to be a hundred percent sure you're not going to use need or use the book. You think you're that person? I, I will accept it early. Uh, come see me during essay. I'll remind you when I hand out the test as well too. That uh, hey, anyone want to turn the book in? Turn the book. But I just caution you. Like, yeah, I'm going to get rid of this book as soon as possible. And then we'll be on Wednesday. We're doing a review. You're like, ooh, I completely forgot how to do that stuff. You won't have your book to to open it up and see how it's done. That sort of thing. I mean, you probably just look back on your notes. That's assuming that people kept their notes, right? I kept them. I just had Some people do. 
Remember I said keep your notes until the end of semester and then toss them. Nobody should have their notes from semester one because Oh, I do. I mean, technically we still are doing stuff from semester one, just not um, you know, not specifically. Like we're not going to have questions only from chapter one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, the stuff that we have in chapter eight actually uses some of the stuff we had in chapter one, but it's not specifically on chapter one. Any questions? All right. Hey, don't blow off semester finals. Semester finals are that, I mean, from now on until you, if you go to college as well, semester finals are like a big momentous thing. You're like, ah, oh, winter finals, right? Um, some people uh, look forward to finals. I was not one of them. Other people dread finals. I was somewhere in between. I just knew that it involved a whole lot of study. But I also gave it some thought. I didn't just like, oh, wait, what's the final tomorrow? Right? I gave it thought before I was a day out so that I could say, okay, this is the final that I got to study for. If math is your thing and you're like, when are you going to show me something that I don't remember? Then you probably don't require that much study. If math is not your thing and it's the one thing that you have to get a good grade in, then you need to start studying today for it. I do these problems multiple times. Yeah. Hey. Might be a stupid question, but like in number one and number two, how can you tell if it is a negative or a minus? Remember, from now on, but we consider those the same. No difference. We just look at the sign. If it's a minus sign, we say it's negative. If it's a positive sign, we say it's positive. But the minus sign also means subtraction. The big picture is it doesn't matter. If I write There are two numbers there. What are the two numbers? Ten and four. No. What are the two numbers there? And when I put 10 and negative 4 together, I have 10 positive, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I have four negatives. How many are left with? Cancel, 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 cancel. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is why from now on, when someone says, wait, is that a minus sign or a negative sign? We say, yes, it's both. It literally does say 10 minus 4. And yes, the answer is 6. But if we think about it in terms of positive and negatives, we don't get a different answer. It's the same thing. So if you're talking about its value, its value is negative 4. If you talk about it in terms of operations, it's 10 minus 4. Now, remember, subtraction is the same as adding the opposite. So you can also think about this as 10 plus negative four. The symbol looks exactly the same because it is, at least in terms of calculations, yeah. Now that's a negative 13. Anybody else? All right, e-learners, that's all I got for you today. We're going to spend the rest of the time uh, going over this and answering any specific questions. Do you guys have any questions? I think it's Pierce is the only one online right now. Hey, Pierce. Yeah. Oh, he sent me a chat. What did he say? It can be two pages, Pierce. Oh. No, he's still here. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Gavin. No, Gavin is being Gavin, Pierce. He just Gavin, oh send me your Discord over to you. All right, I'm going to close the uh, video down now. We'll meet same time, same bat channel tomorrow. Back channel. Oh my Where are we, the CIA? You have YouTube. You've never heard that before? No. Mr. Chartier has YouTube. We're not <laughs> this was the 60s. I don't care. <laughs> Sorry. I don't I don't ask people how old they are. That's rude. Yeah. Unless it's like my sister. So this was how Batman and Robin no. ended every episode. Sympathetic migration, but also 
He didn't say it. He's supposed to say. Yeah. Was there a lever right there that said Thank you. All right. It's for you. Anyway, they used to end the show saying, what's going to happen to Batman? Find out next week. Oh, here we go. Hey guys, good evening. Welcome to my side. Oh my gosh, just get to the clip. Bro, I love Mando. All right. Mando. Okay. Just like it would always be tune in tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. Oh, don't worry. I've seen it. Uh, Mr. Sardier. I know my Dynamic throws the most chilling cliffhanger. <laughs> you ever w seen the, the video of them walking up a wall? Oh, yeah. yeah. I know they did that sideways. Oh, they did it this way. Yeah, I know. They just turned the camera sideways. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm talking about. Really, it's like. It's and it looks fake. You can tell. Yeah. What? I didn't help on number eight. All right. Like they could have just set him up a little. It's the first time YouTube has failed me in a long time. It did fail you before when you thought it was a video. 